Okay, a pleasant morning to everyone. So for today, we are going to study about practical research too. So we have the introduction first about quantitative research. So after you had your qualitative research, this time we would be moving to quantitative. So we're done with experiences, with words, with descriptions. This time, we are going to look into numbers, digits, and, and anything that deals with stats, okay? So we're done with the descriptions of qualitative. We would now be jumping to quantity or numbers. So again, introduction to quantitative research. So with the thirst for new knowledge and knowing the research is already being done. So we are doing this already. So this involves uh, collecting and gathering data and information through scientific or logical procedure that would aim to solve a particular problem. So this module today, my dear students, would focus on quantitative research, its definition, characteristics, trends, and weaknesses, and importance across different fields of study. So if you remember, we also had this before in practical research one, it's just that the focus was on qualitative research. So what's quantitative research? Quantitative research is explaining phenomena by collecting numerical data that are then analyzed using mathematically based methods. So the anchorage would always be on mathematics in terms of data analysis. Unlike in qualitative research, you often use the thematic analysis, content analysis, or even discourse analysis, things that deal with words. And quantitative research emphasizes the use of statistical, mathematical, and numerical analysis of data that are collected through polls, okay, questionnaires, surveys, or manipulating pre-existing data using computation techniques, okay? So, but here, let's clarify manipulating. We're not necessarily fabricating things, but we're going to use data to come up with a sensible interpretation of it using various computational techniques. So that's why before you had this, you already had your uh, statistics and probability, okay? So what are the characteristics of quantitative research? So first, of course, data is in the form of numbers. That's what we often say, okay? It will always be in, for, in the form of numbers. So data are also analyzed if they are in form of numbers, using statistical methods, using graphs, charts, tables, and figures. So that's how we make, uh, how, that's how we present our data. That's how we present the numbers that we had from the data gathering. Data are gathered using structured and standardized research instrument. So in that case, a moment please. So in that case, you are going uh, to use instruments that have been that, that were tested already, that were used by existing uh, studies that are standardized. Or if you really want to like push your um, abilities, you could formulate your own, but you would have to uh, pilot test. You have you should have it validated and all for it to be considered acceptable for quantitative research. Again, we use structured and standardized research instruments. That means you cannot just come up with a, with a survey and then declare it as something that you could use. We will have to check the validity and the reliability of the instrument plus the validation of the experts. Here, we also have the hypothesis testing and theories. So if you remember your statistics, there is the 
testing of the hypothesis process that you could do using uh, the data that you have. So we will be applying this in our study with the help of statisticians as well. For number five, we could also say that quantitative research is objective. So what's objective? So let's put the opposite of, of, of objective, which is subjective. Objective is impersonal. You're detached. You don't allow your feelings to intervene. Nothing personal. Subjective, on the other hand, is personal, opinionated, everything that comes from the person. So both of which are not negative. They are neutral terms. But, of course, we know that uh, subjectivity has no room for quantitative research since this has to be logical, objective, and based on numbers. Okay? They are reliable. They won't change. Okay? So, it also uses convergent reasoning uh, rather than divergent. Okay? So, these two are different, okay? In a sense that we would often see this as to how the data is approached. So in that case, the way we answer the problems or the way we address, address the selected question, it is convergent going to, towards one solution. However, when we talk about divergent, it's more on creativity. Like you think of multiple ways on how to solve the problem, okay? And results are based on larger sample sizes than representative of a population. So if you remember in the past, in Kuali, you could have like 15 to 20 or even less. Since you're going for an in-depth um, attack in terms of the data. But for quantity, you need something broader. So it's something horizontal. You have to have the sufficient number of sample so that it will be reliable, so that it would be better. So for quantity, you have the sampling techniques and you have ways on how to compute for the sample, but definitely it has a bigger number okay so again data is in form of numbers data are analyzed using statistical methods and we use graphs charts tables and figures data are gathered using structured standardized research instruments that you cannot just formulate out of the blue because you have to check its uh, validity and reliability and you would have it validated as well there is the testing of the hypothesis um, we also have to be objective and reliable. We use convergent reasoning rather than divergent reasoning. And then results are based on larger sample sizes. Okay, compared to quality, wherein you could have smaller ones. So what would be the importance of quantitative research? Let's look into this. So quantitative research is used to measure the level of performance of the learners and the factors that would in influence them. It is also used to evaluate the effectiveness of various teaching styles, school programs, learning modalities, and satisfaction of people. So quantitative research is important in conducting educational researches that can improve the educational system through generalized and tested studies. So there is the room for generalization here, especially if the population is well represented by the um, by the sample. So here we are measuring the performance, the satisfaction, the, the factors. So it's about numbers. Really, it's about numbers. This is where we evaluate, okay? We check, are they satisfied? Uh, what is their performance, what is their preferred modalities, what is their attitude, what is their perception towards a particular approach using survey questionnaire or using their uh, numerical data, okay? 
in terms of business, quantitative research can effectively improve the marketing strategy through looking into the consumer opinion. So if you recall at times when you go to a restaurant or a fast food chain, there are there there are times when you will be approached to answer a, a short survey. Even in uh, in delivery services, there are also instances when you would have to fill out a short survey in terms of like uh, in terms of like con consumer opinion or your satisfaction if you called uh, customer service they would ask you to read uh, the call and the services from one to five something like that so indeed quantitative research can create an effective product campaign and identify marketable demographics among others. So it's, it really is very useful for, for business that through quantitative research, you would know the numbers that would help you boost your sales. In terms of health services, it's also helpful because it will help you in investigations in terms of medical and health services. It analyzes the effectiveness on a particular level of an, within a, a given number of people, something like that, on how the certain drug would cure diseases. There could be comparisons in terms of the recoveries, okay? As they try to have or discover more, um, more groundbreaking um solutions to illnesses that are considered chronic or even terminal. So here comes experimental research as looking into the efficacy of medicine, vaccines, and medical practices. However, within the ethical grounds, okay? There should still be the adherence to, to the ethics in research. We also find it useful in science and technology because Quantitative research is used in science and technology, mostly in testing the efficacy of new inventions, gadgets, machines, and devices. So we also look into the factors that will that will actually affect the different phenomena in environment through experimental research. So experimental research, you might have heard it already. Um, this is having the experimental and the control group. So it is used in testing different scientific models, series, hypothesis, and improving the quality of life. So when we're referring to gadgets, uh, they could study uh, the efficacy of new gadgets or in inventions. There could be trial and error. There could be survey among the users, etc. And everything would be based, would be used as basis to improve those existing products. That's why our phones right now are so far from the very first version that were released in the past. And continuously, our smartphones and even laptops are improved or are improving. So we have the strengths of quantitative research. So again, it has a large sample size, hence generalizable compared to qualitative. You can really generalize because the sample size is not really relatively large. Hence, you cannot say that it's representative of the population. But for quantity, the larger the sample size, the better, the more generalizable it is. Then data and findings are reliable. Okay, They can be used for policy making, again, because they would represent the population. It can also be replicated, the, the data questionnaires and sets can be replicated to have more findings, perhaps in a different locality. Personal interaction is also not part of the research process, so there, there's no space for, for personal biases. You, could, you would just hand the questionnaire after the respondent is done, they would just give it to you. At uh, in so, at some point, others will just like send the link, and then that's it. And like in qualitative, you would have to talk to the person for quite some time, thirty minutes to an hour, and then yeah, comp comparing it to quantitative, quantitative would just take uh just a few minutes, okay.
that's why data gathering for quantitative is easier because you could conduct like the the survey for a few minutes for among let's say 50, 50 respondents but if you're going to have 50 respondents for quality it will take you a lot of time the standards are used in choosing instruments statistical treatment and sampling procedure so that there is what i've been telling you a while back validity and reliability of data on the other hand of course it's not perfect there would always be the witnesses okay so okay sorry sorry um of course there would be the witnesses but uh the slide is not here so i'll just be giving you the witnesses of what quantitative so in this case we would say that it's not in depth compared to qualitative because qualitative practically deals with more comprehensive approach towards every case or data so in that case hindi siya malalim okay hindi siya ganun kalalim katulad nung sa quality okay it could also have lack of necessary data to fully explore a particular problem okay and then aside from this the research design can be uh firm it's fixed i say it's fixed na eh, and not not very flexible okay so hence if you want to do so, some changes or anything Wala na, kasi it's already there. There's also the limitation in interaction. Therefore, you're also going to have limitation of responses. You, can, you cannot like ask follow-up questions anymore. You cannot clarify anymore the, the responses from the respondent since after they submit. Okay? That's it. Unless you do a follow-up. But most of the time, the responses are limited to yes or no or to the scale. There are also cases when the responses can be inaccurate. Okay? Who knows if the respondent just like selected or just guessed whatever it is. And then of course, large sample sizes are considered costly. They cost a lot, okay? So every approach, every research type would always have the ups and downs, but every research um, design or every research type would also have their beauty. So a topic would necessitate a particular research type and research design, and we have to be really critical what is fitting for that particular topic. So with that, for us to check, kindly answer the following using your bond paper, okay? So I am going to give you a few moments to like screenshot this one, okay? I'll also be sending this to you uh, using our group chat if ever you're my students, okay? And then this will be checked, okay, by the next meeting. So that I would I would know if you really paid attention to this discussion or not. So should you have questions, okay? Feel free to ask through the comment section and don't forget to like and subscribe. And for the next lesson, we'll be looking into variables. So I hope I shed some light about quantitative research. So See you around and God bless. Bye-bye.